All right, this is Julie here, seconds out. Fabio Wardley, Wardley is joining me now. And we are, of course, outside of London Bridge for your fight week. Big show at the O2. How are you feeling? Yeah, buzzing, man. Buzzing. Feel good. Feel really good, actually. I've been in a really good mood the last few days. And I usually get a little bit grumpy on fight week, so I'm in a good place. That means, obviously, you're getting... You're warming into the pros where you've had enough fights now, but um, yeah, comfortable on fight week. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Comfortable with the process. Like I've even been here a few times and stuff. It's that same place. So, you know, with the rigmarole, the bits you have to go through. So it's no problems at all. How are you feeling? Good. In a good place. In a good mood. Ready to go, mate. I'm just ready to get stuck in. I'm excited for Saturday. I think it's going to be a good test, a good fight. So I just want to go now. You were obviously um, having fights throughout COVID. Now that it's gone and passed, because everyone at the time would tell me, oh, it's no different without the fans, etc." But did you feel that that change in that buzz once the fans have come back? Yeah, definitely. You do feel it. It doesn't. It's not the same experience. It's not the same feeling. Um, it does take away from the events a bit. But we had to kind of make do in them situations of with what you could. And, and Ed and the team at Matchroom and stuff did what they could to make sure fighters could still fight and earn money. So ultimately, we were thankful for it. But it's so good to have everyone back. Yeah, we can see Chisora coming in the ring now. It's going to be an exciting headline fight as well. Yeah, it's going to be a great night. I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be a good one. I think they've titled it really well, Total Carnage. I think so. How did you see it going? I think it's going to be a hard fight for either. I think really Derek, you know what Derek does. He always comes to stick it on you and really put the pressure on. But I think overall he will come through on the back end. I, uh, yeah, I think he could fight for a few more fights after this. But how far do you see him? How long do you see him fighting for after this? I don't know. I don't know if he ever wants to retire. I don't know if he ever wants to stop. I don't think he does. But um, I don't know. He's got another year or two, I think, in him. Definitely. How about yourself? When are you going to start getting in the even bigger fights? We've seen you in big fights before. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I think after this year, early next year is when we start pushing him to them really big ones. Really big ones. Because I want this fight, obviously, Kingsley. We'll get him done out of the way. Nathan Gorman, potentially, for the British at the end of the year. Then next year is the big ones. That's still a big fight, though, Nathan Gorman. Yeah, of course. It is a, it is a big fight. But, but I'm talking about moving into fringe world level right on the edge of it, just getting there and, and being thick in the mix. How would you see that fight with you and Gorman going? Seeing me win him. <laughs> any, any, would you see it distant stoppage? Um, I'd probably back myself with a stoppage, definitely. Um, I'd probably back myself with a stoppage, it's what I do, it's my thing. I don't mind wearing an opponent through for a bit to land a good right hand on them, so I'm happy to do that. But I, either way, I don't think it'd be a cakewalk and not in the slightest, it's a good hard fight. Uh, Carlos Sackham came on seconds out and said he was offered a fight with yourself, accepted it, but heard nothing. Just one. What's your side of the story? Yeah, definitely. It was something I don't know where the miscommunication was between teams, but it was a fight we wanted. It was a fight we asked for as well. So potentially after this year, we can do that late next year. Like my schedule for the rest of the year seems kind of mapped out. So after that, then maybe we can do that. But I'm not really sure where the breakdown ended up being. Fair enough. How would you see that one going as well? Obviously, heavyweights, he's more experienced than you, but you see yourself winning. Yeah, I'd always see myself winning. Um, he's a very good, strong, come forward fighter, but you know what you're going to get with him. So he's not. I'm not going to say easy to set a game plan for because no fight against Carlos Takam is easy, but you know what you've got to do with him, and I think I can do that. Um, just a quick one on AJ Usyk too. How Robert Garcia in AJ's corner, etc., etc., how that's going to change the fight? Yeah, I do. It's, it's, it's going to be an interesting one, but I think with him and the new trainer, I don't know if it's enough time for him to really make those right adjustments, and especially against someone like Usyk. So I think it's just going to be the same, really. I think it's going to be repeat. They won't be obviously fighting when you're at the top of the division, but um, who do you think wins that? I think Usyk wins it, yeah. yeah. Cool, cool. Uh, why are you feeling ahead of Saturday? Just just kind of to end off the interview, we've, we've said how you feel comfortable, etc., etc. But um, making the ring walk in that moment, does it still excite you or is it like work to you? How does it actually feel in that moment? No, it's, it's buzzing. I love it. It's my favourite thing. I just You're stood there, you're relaxed, everything's done now, your training's done. It's just that small walk to the ring and then you're there and done and then it's game on. Some people say like they're scared in that moment, but kind of angry as well. It's not, not, not like that for you. It's different. Not for me. People take it differently, but not for me. But I try and just relax and just soak in, soak in the moment. It's your time, your moment. Make the most of it. Thank you so much for your time.